Before we get started, I want to go over the paint colors that I have laid out here. I may or may not use uh, this yellow here, but I have it just to brighten things up, just to be on the safe side. But I want to go over all of the colors that I have laid out, so you'll know what I'm using. Please don't feel like you have to go out and purchase all these colors. I have them on the supply list, but they are just suggested colors. It's what I used in my painting, that's why I made a supply list. You can use cheapy craft paint or whatever colors you have on hand. Uh, to create your painting. So I am using Liquitex Basics. I'm also using Soho Artist Acrylics and Artist Loft Artist Acrylics. But again, you, you can use whatever paint you've got. Uh, the colors that I have are Raw Umber, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Hooker's Green, Brilliant Yellow Green, Cad Yellow, Naples Yellow, Titanium White, and Mars Black. This is what I'm starting out with. I may or may not use this CAD yellow. It kind of depends on how the painting is looking. And my canvas is a pre-gessoed canvas. And it is 12 by 16. If you are used to using a canvas and this size is what you normally use, I challenge you to use a size that is larger. If you normally use uh, an art journal or some other substrate some um, a, you know a book of some sort or, or anything like that I challenge you to use a canvas remember this entire class is about stepping out of your comfort zone and pushing yourself and that's really what this week is is all about um, we we went over the things that make us happy and bringing bringing those things back into our daily activities now we want to start pushing the envelope a little bit and really stepping out of our comfort zone and doing things that aren't normally in our daily routines. So, since we are breaking through the surface, so to speak, that's exactly what our painting is going to be. Um, I am going to be creating a painting of a newly sprouted plant uh, with the seed breaking through, well not breaking through the surface, but you know, just, just coming out of its seed and and growing some new leaves. Because that's what we're doing here, we're, we're growing our new leaves and, and exploring new things. Here we go. I'm going to take my palette and I want to start mixing up my background colors. So I'm just going to take some of this Naples yellow and titanium white. And I want to use, I want to have some white by itself, some yellow by itself, but then I also want to mix about half and half of those two together because I want a lighter shade of yellow, even lighter than the Naples yellow. Remember when you're blending your colors, you want to really work it in there and really make sure it's blended well before you add more of either color because as you mix it more, the shade is going to change and you may not in you may not need any more paint in the end once it's all blended. Remember last week I challenged you to use large paint brushes. I want you to do the same thing again this week. If you have a really large paint brush, I want you to use that this week as well. So I'm just going to take and wet my paintbrush if I can't, I can't get it down into my paint cup. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> Alright, so. <laughs> oh, well, that works too. Just pour a little bit of water on your canvas, whatever. You just want your canvas wet. So my canvas is pretty wet. I'm going to dip into that really light Naples yellow and water mixture and just paint that on there. And you can see I'm not using any specific brush strokes or techniques, I'm just trying to cover my surface. Most of this is just going to be covered up anyway. Remember I said last week you, just, you need to be able to let it go. Whatever you put down, be prepared to let it go because it's probably going to get covered up. And I don't waste a whole hell of a lot of paint, but I do want layers on there, so oh, I just knocked something over. just knocked one of my paints over. Don't be afraid to lose whatever you put in the background, because it may get covered up. If your canvas starts to get a little bit too dry, spritz it with some more water. 
And remember, don't forget to paint your edges. This week you will probably get messy, so you might want to have on an apron or your paint clothes. Just be on the safe side. Because, well, that's what I would need to do because I'm a messy painter. <laughs> so this is our first layer. You want this layer good and dry before you start working with anything else because you don't want any white patches to pop back through. So make sure you have your entire canvas coated with a good layer of this super light yellow and white mixed together. And then dry that before you go on to your next step. When I dried my canvas, I also grabbed some magazines to stick underneath so that I have something firm to press on and it's not going to uh, cause my canvas to dip because we're going to be applying some pressure with a brayer. So you need to have something underneath your canvas. Make sure it's nice and level. You want to press on it a little bit. Make sure you can't really feel the edges of what you put underneath there. Because if, you're, if it's taller than the edges of your canvas, then it's going to cause an outline on the front of your canvas. And you don't want that either. So you want it to be nice and level or just a tiny bit lower than the surface of your canvas. Now we're going to take our... Naples yellow just by itself. Load up our brayer. And you just want to roll over the entire surface of your canvas. With your brayer and that Naples yellow. You don't want this one to be diluted. You want it to be nice and vibrant. And don't worry if it looks messy to begin with. That's what you want. We're going to make it nice and beautiful as we go. If you get a little bit of white in there, it's okay. I just got some white in mine. It's fine. Add a little bit more paint if you need to. I just kind of blob it on there and move it. Just kind of see what happens, where it goes. Let it do its thing. And just relax. You see, I'm going pretty quickly here because I don't want perfection. I want a messy background to begin with. It's just going to create depth and interest in your background. So don't worry about this being perfect. The less perfect it is, the better. So just keep playing with this and adding more yellow with the brayer until you get a look that you're happy with. And again, the messier it is, the better it is. Next, I want to mix up a little bit of this brilliant yellow green, and I want to make a wash of this. So I'm going to add a bit of water, quite a bit of water actually, and then just blend this in with the water. You can see how thin this is. Now I just want to like scrape this on. Again, messy is good. Just pat it on there and smear it around. If you fling paint, that's okay too. I'm going really quickly here. I don't I don't want to have time to think about this. I don't want to have time to second guess whether or not I should have put that on there. Is 
because then you freeze up. If you start thinking about it too much, you freeze up. You don't want to freeze up. We're stepping out of our comfort zone. We're getting past all of that. So just scoop it up and smear it on. As a matter of fact, let's blob some of this on there. See what happens with it. So you can see exactly what's going on here. I have some of that yellow on there with my brayer. I have some of these green bits where I smeared it. And then I have some of these green bits where I just flung that last little bit of paint on here. So now what I'm going to do is hit this with my heat gun until it's almost dry. And then I'm going to go back and blot off just a few of these uh, wetter areas just to dry them a little bit quicker. Uh, not, to, not to take the paint off because I like it, but just just because it's going to be a little bit too wet and I want it to dry fairly quickly. So I'm going to hit it with my heat gun until it's almost dry and then blot it back off. Now that this is dry and I've blotted off the um, puddled areas, I want to take a really dark green spray. And this is just made with some acrylic paint and glazing medium and water. You can make your own sprays at home. You can use the Hooker's Green to make your own spray, add a tiny bit of black to it, and you'll get a really nice deep green, which is what I'm using here. And I'm just going to spray this and I'm holding it fairly closely because I want concentrated areas of color. And now while it's really wet, I'm going to blot it right back off because I don't want it that dark in all of the spots. There we go. And you can see how quickly this entire background has come together. It, there was no thought put into this. There's no pressure put into this. You can't get it wrong. Just layer it on there and see what happens. If you don't like it, you can always gesso back over this and cover it up. Now I need to take all of this and push it back a little bit. So I'm going to take some water and add it to my white paint from earlier. And I don't want to make it too thin, but I need it to be a little bit more fluid than it is now. You want a nice thin consistency, but not not a wash and not not very thick. You could also use glazing medium in place of water if you have it. Now we're just going to take and whitewash the entire canvas. Add more water if you need to. And I know it looks like we're covering everything up and you can't see any of it, but don't worry. We're going to fix that in just a second. Now while it's really wet, blot it off. This will lighten everything up and push back all of those bright vivid colors. You can see mine's kind of turning a minty green here. That's because my spray ink is not permanent or not dry. So now we're going to do the same thing here. Add plenty of water. and then blot it back off. You can blot off more in some places than in others. If 
it feels like it's not coming off enough, you can wet it with your paintbrush and blot a little bit more. And then with a wet paintbrush, you want to go back over the whole thing just to blend it. And then you can blot it again, which will bring out some more of that original color. But it gives you a really nice muted background. Keep adding layers to your background until you're happy with the way it looks. Add layers, blot them away, splatter more paint, use your brayer, keep building up the layers until you're happy with the way your background looks. You don't want your background to be too vivid, you want the focal point of your painting to stand out. So you want to try and keep it a pretty light color, but just keep adding layers until you're happy with it. And then once you are happy with your background, you can always go back if it's still a little bit too vivid and do this whitewash technique. And, and push everything back so that your focal point pops off of the canvas just a little bit more. Once you are happy with your background, you want to start drawing in your focal point and blocking in the images down at the bottom. So our focal point is going to be a small plant that's just breaking out of its seed and starting to grow and gain some leaves. So we're going to draw a little mound for it to sit on. And I'm just using a 6B graphite pencil. You know, I don't really care for graphite, but it is perfect for sketching on your canvas because it's very easy to erase. So I have my little mound here. And then I'm also going to have two additional little mounds of grass coming here on the sides. One here and one here. Those are just kind of overlapping each other. I should take it out a little further. So I have the top of my mound right here. And I just want to start drawing in my little seed and my plant coming up. So you need to figure out where you want your seed. and draw that in. And I'm just drawing like a little almond shape here. And then we want our vine to come out a little bit. And our baby plant to come up. You just want to kind of draw a wavy line. And then you want two little branches to come off of your plant. Don't be afraid to turn your canvas. Erase what you don't need. Don't press very hard because you don't want your paint to start coming off and you don't want ugly black smudges in your background. We need little bumps here for our vines where they're just a little bit thicker.
and then blending into the branches coming off. Want a few little tiny buds here. It helps if you have a photo reference to look at when you're drawing. And I'll share my photo in the Facebook group, the photo that I'm using for reference. It just helps with the placement and the shapes, because these are basic shapes here. I'm drawing in some leaf shapes. Alright, I have my basic plant sketched out here, and don't worry, there's a template for this plant in the Facebook group. So if you do not feel comfortable drawing your own plant, never fear, the template is right in the files for you to use. You can print the template and then do the same technique that you did with the lotus flower where you uh, use the graphite pencil and then transfer your image. You can just print it out and then paste it on. Or you can find your own image and use that as a photo reference to draw your own plant if that's what you choose to do. Once you have your plant drawn onto your canvas or printed onto your canvas, you want to go back over with a darker pencil. Now I'm using a woodless colorless pencil. This is a Progresso Koi Noir um, woodless colorless woodless colored pencil. Uh, you can use a Prismacolor or you can just go back over with your graphite. You just want to define those lines a little bit more, darken them down a little bit. And again, I'm using the colored pencil because I like using the same color as my paint. This is also going to help me with my shading later on. And uh, I don't like the look of graphite. So this is going to give me the ability to erase that graphite and still have my image on my canvas so that I can then go back and paint it in. Now that we have our plants sketched out and gone over with the colorless, uh, woodless, colorless, woodless colored pencil, you want to go through and block in the color for your plant. Now I'm using that wash of white that I went back over my entire painting with. You can use your Naples yellow or you can use your full strength white paint. You just want to block in your plant so that your background colors aren't coming through. So I'm just going to finish blocking in this entire plant with my base coat of color and then we will start painting our actual plant. You want to let this completely dry and then once your blocked in first layer is dry you want to go back in with your colored pencil or your graphite pencil and just redefine all of your lines a little bit uh, because you may have lost them some when you're blocking in the color. If you go outside a little bit that's okay you'll be able to cover that with your paint later on. Now we want to start bringing the green into our plant so I'm going to use my brilliant yellow green for my first layer of color. I'm going to go right back over and block in my color to begin with. Right back over the top of the white layer we just did. You just want to put down a layer of color, this brilliant yellow green, over the entire plant. We're actually going to cover 
most of this brilliant yellow up again but you still want it on there to create that depth and give you some layers on your plant and they will some of it will show through Now that we have our first couple of layers of color blocked in, we want to start adding the shadows and depth to our plant. So I'm going to take a little bit of Hooker's Green and I'm going to mix a medium shade with my Brilliant Yellow Green and a little bit of the Hooker's Green. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this color and mix it in with more of the brilliant yellow green to lighten it up and one more time just whatever's left on your palette knife move it over and mix it in with some of that brilliant yellow green Some of our leaves are going to be darker than others, so you need a few different shades to work with here. So you need to figure out which of your flowers are going to be the very lightest and take this lightest green here that you've worked up. I'm just going to mark my flowers now so I know which, I mean my leaves now, so I know which ones I want to keep really light and which ones I want to darken down a little bit. So now I'm just going to paint in my lightest leaves. And if some of that brilliant yellow shows through, that brilliant yellow green, that's good. You, you don't need to worry about completely coating your leaves here. Just kind of blend in this lightest shade of green that you've created. Like so. Now you want to figure out which of your flowers are going to be a little bit darker than that and go over those and do this one I think and this one and this one. I'm just kind of marking mine so I know which ones to go back to. Notice that I'm not completely filling in the leaves here. I'm just kind of swirling my paintbrush around, incorporating this medium green with the brilliant yellow green. And if you have brush strokes, that's good too, because your leaves are going to have texture. Now we need our darkest leaves. So this one, this one, 
and this one. You may need to blend it with a little bit of that middle green that we made if it's a little bit too dark. If it just looks too stark and like it's just standing out, mix it in with a little bit more of that medium green. Add a little bit of your darkest green first, kind of work that in a little bit, and then go back over it with that middle shade of green that you made. And then just work them together. They don't need to be completely blended. If you've got some streaks, that's good. Got my layer of the dark green. Now I'm going to take this middle green. Oops. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So I worked first with my dark green, put my layer of dark green down, and then I went into my middle green here. I'm just going to work that in. Even a little bit of the lighter green isn't going to hurt. Just keep mixing those three colors on each leaf until you get a good blend that you're happy with. I'm going to darken this one down a little bit in a few places. And this one here. And it's just whatever's left on my paintbrush. Got my dark green on here. And then while that's still really wet, going back with that middle green and blending. Now whatever's left on my paintbrush with these darker shades, I'm going to go back over my other leaves that are left. Just kind of dragging my paintbrush through a little bit. If you need to grab a tiny bit more, go back over. Start with this darker green again. Go back over one of your dark leaves and then bring it into one of your lighter leaves. And then just kind of work it in. Go back over with the lighter shades if you need to. You just don't want any of them to be a flat color. Add a little bit of each color to each of your leaves. Even the lighter leaves need some of the darker green. Now we want to take some plain hooker's green and go down the front of our vine here. You might need to add a little bit of water to your paintbrush to thin it out and get it to spread a little bit more. You may even want to create a wash. You're just darkening the front of your vine where it's kind of curved towards you. It's got that shadow. And if it's if it's wet enough, the green will kind of sink into the brush strokes and so it won't be just a flat green color. I'm also going to take some of this medium green and blend it in. More water. And just back and forth with your medium or light green and your 
hooker's green by itself. So remember I put the hooker's green on my palette so I'm just dipping just the tip of my paintbrush right into my plain hooker's green and then bringing it onto my vine with a bit of water. I'm going to turn my painting upside down to finish working here. Once you get towards the bottom of your vine this little bit of curved root right here you want to leave that with just the um, lightest green that you've put on there. You don't want to add any of this dark green to that. Okay. And now just blend this hooker's green up into your vine a little bit. You can see it's very, very wet. I'm going to dip my paintbrush into my water and into my hooker's green and bring just the finest little line, kind of like a dotted line. A dotted line up both of my vines here. Now with plain water, just going to blend that in. Just so I've got some darker spots on my vines. Get more water if you need it. These little vines I'm going to kind of trace with the hooker's green and water. And then with a wet, just water on my paintbrush, kind of drag a little bit of that green towards the center of the leaf. And then immediately go back into that lightest green and blend that in as well. I'm also going to take a little bit of my Brilliant Yellow Green by itself and blend that right into the center of my tiniest little leaves there. I'm going to flip my canvas upside down because now I want to work on this little root area right here. So I'm going to take my Brilliant Yellow Green by itself. My paintbrush still has a bit of that darker green in it and that's okay. If you feel like it's too much dark green just blot it off. So I've got that brilliant yellow green by itself. I'm going to blend that right here, right at the base. Blend it up with a little bit of water. Tiniest bit of that darker green again. Blot it off if you need to, if it's a little too dark. And now we need a little bit of white, so I've got some plain white paint here and I'm just with a very wet paintbrush going over my little tiny bit of vine here, blending this white up into the main vine. Turn my painting right side up again. I'm going to come here to the top, work a little bit of white into this. right into the very tip, right here on my new bulbs here, blend that down, and then right on each of my little leaves I'm going to do tiny bits of white, just some highlights. Once you're happy with the way your leaves look, you want to completely dry your painting. 
because for the next step you're going to be applying more paint and then lifting it off so you need these layers to be dry so that you don't affect them. Now we want to create the veins in our leaves so I'm going to take some white and mix in a little bit of that brilliant yellow green. See, I only have a tiny bit of this yellow green. You want this to be a very, very light, light green color. Just a hint of green. My minty green is all mixed up. Now we want to create some texture on our leaves. So I have a piece of aluminum foil here, and all I did was crinkle it and straighten it, crinkle it and straighten it. And I did that three or four times, and you'll notice that I have about a billion little crinkles in this foil and this is what you want now if you have a stamp with some really cool veined texture then you can absolutely use your stamp for this but I'm showing you a technique that will work in case you don't have a stamp so you want to take your aluminum foil and get all of your little creases in there then you want to take your minty green and brush it on very lightly And now use your aluminum foil as a stamp on your leaves to create the look of veins and texture. And we're going to do this a few different times, but you want to start with your lightest color. And brush it on there and then stamp it onto your leaves. And I kind of have my aluminum foil rolled a little bit. It's kind of curved so that I can rock it back and forth onto my leaves. And I don't recommend stamping this into your paint because you don't want to get too much paint on here. I'm just barely brushing on a tiny bit of paint. And if your foil starts to flatten out, don't press quite so hard and then just move to a different spot. And you can make this as small as you need it to be so that you can get into the little spots on your plants, on your leaves, without going over the edges. Once you're happy with the light color, you want to go back, get just a little bit of that dark green, mix it in with your minty green, and do the same thing. Just whatever was on my paintbrush is all I mixed in there. Now one more time with the plain hooker's green. You need a bit of water in here because you want it to be thin. Like a wash of the hooker's green. You don't want the hookers to be dark. <laughs> you don't want the hookers to be dark. <laughs> uh, and then stamp on with the darker. Bits. If you get it in a place that you don't want it, just rub it off. See, just this tiniest little bit adds so much depth to these leaves. They're not just little flat things that you painted on your canvas anymore. Just play with 
it back and forth with that light green and dark green until you get the look on your leaves that you are happy with. And you just want them to not be so flat. You want a little bit of the light and a little bit of the dark on each leaf. Once you have your little stamping effect on here, you want to take your minty green and a teeny tiny little paintbrush. You want to use the smallest paintbrush that you've got and just go down each of your leaves and draw a center vein. And if your paint seems too thick, add a little bit of water to it so that it spreads a little bit more. And you want a thin line, you don't want it to spread out. So don't be afraid to blot it off if you need to. Do that for each of your leaves. Draw that thin center line and just kind of blend it in. You can dab it with your finger. I don't want it to be really noticeable. You need it to be there, but not completely noticeable. And if it kind of skips a little bit, that's okay too. I'm kind of drawing it on there and then rubbing up and down one time with my finger staying straight. You don't want to blend it out. You want to blend it, but you want it to stay in a straight line. Then once you have your little straight lines, you want to go back and draw a few little veins coming off of each one. Just a few and they don't have to be perfect and then you can kind of blot them. You may want to do three to five little uh, veins off of your center vein. on how large your leaves are really. I hope this noise in the background isn't too loud. They're they're working on the street outside. <laughs> and they quit finally. <laughs> but I'm kind of at a point now where I can't really stop what I'm doing. So I wanted to keep going with the video. Now on these darker leaves we're actually going to go back over this a little bit. So don't worry if it if it really stands out on your dark leaves. We're going to go back over that. You can see I'm just like pressing into the paint. Once I paint it on here, I'm just pressing into it to blot it off a little bit onto my finger and smear it. And on your larger leaves, you may want to do more of these, maybe six or eight, depending on how large your leaves are.
Now on these really dark leaves where it looks like it's just standing out way too much, go back to one of these other greens that you mixed up and use a little bit of that. You can even use just the hooker's green by itself if you need to for some darker veins. You might actually like the way that looks. That's what I'm going to do. But remember, still blot it off. You don't want it to be too vivid, especially if you're using the darker paint. I think I might even go over the lighter ones as well. Very, very lightly here. Now you just want to play with it. You want to add a little bit of light, add a little bit of dark. Blot it off. If you're not happy with it, you can always wipe it right off. Just wet a, a larger paintbrush. Paint over it with the plain water and then blot it off with a paper towel. This will all come right off. You can see just that little bit of tapping with my finger, how it just pushes it into the canvas and blends it right into your leaf. And it doesn't look like it's just laying on top anymore. Bless me, thank me. There we go, last one. And it doesn't have to be a straight, solid line. You can kind of skip it along a little bit. That actually makes it a little bit more natural if it's not perfect. We want to start stepping away from perfect. Because when we try to be perfect, we get stuck. So you can see I have all those different layers with the, the layers of paint and then the stamping with the aluminum foil and then the little tiny veins that we did with the light color and the dark colors of green. Now I'm just going to go back with my hooker's green and I've added some water to it so it's nice and thin and I'm going to just trace each one of my leaves and then do that same thing where you blot it off. So I'm just going to trace right around the outside edge of it like so and then blot one time. I'm going to do that for all of my leaves. I'm 
blot and blot. And now you're just defining the shapes for all of your leaves. Sorry, hope you didn't get dizzy there. You just want to define those shapes, but you don't want it to be a line just sitting on top of your leaf either. So that's why you need to blot it back off. This is especially important up here on these little leaves where you've probably kind of lost their shape a little bit. This is just redefining everything and if you're not sure go back to your reference photo. Go back to your template and then just look and see where all of the lines were originally at and draw your leaves back into place. Now over here on this really dark leaf you might want to define it a little bit with just some straight hookers. Green? <laughs> straight hookers. You knew there was going to be at least one hooker joke. I mean I'm using hookers green. Anyway, on this dark leaf here, you may want to come back in with some straight hookers green <laughs> without so much of the water, just to kind of define it a little bit where, where these three kind of overlap a little bit. Just blend it in. on both of these. Right there. Okay. Now you want to continue with the hooker's green and just outline your entire stem. Just kind of blend it in. Again, this is where you want to just clean up any lines. Redefine your shapes, add your shadows here, but basically you're just outlining the entire stem of your plant. You don't have to use quite the diluted paint here you can use a little bit more a little thicker paint here it doesn't have to be quite as watered down especially on one side you want to determine where your shadow is on that side you definitely want to do a little bit darker On the other side you can do a little bit lighter, a little bit more watered down. You still need to outline it. So I'm going to just finish outlining my entire plant. I'm also going to do a very fine line right around the outside edge of my tiny little stems here. You can see I'm barely touching it. Just barely leaving a mark. Let me zoom in so you can see. So here on this, on these tiny vines, I'm using the really watered down Hooker's Green and 
barely touching it and just kind of dotting along not making a solid line but still outlining so I'm going to finish outlining my plant and then I'll be back to show you the next steps now we want to work on our seed our vine is finished now we need to do our seed so I'm going to take my raw sienna do a first layer here want to make sure not to get it on your vine if you do just use a wet paintbrush and wash it off and then blot it Don't forget the back side of your seed. If you forgot where it goes or if it's got lost in your painting, just go back to your original. While this is wet, I'm going to take my teeny tiny paintbrush and do some little tiny lines of the raw umber. I'm just drawing some lines all the way around just following the shape of the seed and you don't want them to lay on top you want to kind of blend them in so draw it on there and then just keep working back and forth over the same spot until it kind of blends in a little bit While that's wet, you want to go in with a few tiny little streaks of white, watered down white, in between the little brown um, strokes that you made, and then immediately blot those white ones off. We're going to do this a couple times. Now back with your raw umber again and basically draw over those white ones but don't completely cover them up. It's just back and forth here because you, you're trying to create the look of a natural seed and natural seeds just aren't flat brown. So put it on there and then blot it off. You want to basically trace right back over those white lines. You can do a little bit of burnt sienna here. Same thing, just a few lines. We're only using the tiniest bit of these browns, so use whatever browns you have on hand. And you can mix up your own. If you don't have all of these shades and colors, mix a little bit of white, mix a little bit of black with whatever brown you've got. Mix a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow or orange in with your brown to create these different tones and, and colors. My paintbrush just fell apart. Oh my god. <laughs> no worries. Just wet the spot that you don't want. And blot it off. So this burnt sienna really just blends everything together. 
doesn't really cover the white or the dark brown. It just kind of blends everything together. So now you see our seed it looks a lot more realistic. It's not flat just sitting on top of the hill there. Oh no. My my camera my uh, my um, memory card ran out of space and I didn't realize it and I've been recording this whole time and talking to you and it wasn't recording. So what I did was painted in my hill I mixed in some hooker's green and black. I mixed hooker's green and black together to make a really dark green and I painted in my entire hill with the really super dark green just this one little hill here and then I took just the tiniest outline of that right along the outside edge of my vine and along a couple of my leaves just to define them a little bit more. Just on the darker leaves I took just a little bit of that really dark green. And then I went back to Hooker's Green by itself and I'm just bouncing all over the entire bottom portion here, including my darker hill and out into the other two hills on the canvas. And you want to make sure that you're darkening down your outside edges as well. My camcorder doesn't beep or tell me anything when the memory card runs out of space. It just stops and it doesn't beep and go off, it just stops. So, if I don't realize I'm getting close to running out of time, I don't know it's stopping. So I sincerely apologize, but really didn't miss anything. Just me bouncing away, plain hooker's green over the top of what I had here before. Now I still have a little bit of this minty green left. I'm going to take some of that, kind of spounce it in there as well, just in some random spots, not all over the whole thing this time. So you can kind of dab it on there and then work it around and just in different places. You can see I just dot it on and then work it until it, it doesn't move anymore. get it too light, just go back to your plain hooker's green, blend it back in. Remember, make sure you have something under your canvas because you don't want to be spouncing on it and, and poke through or cause any damage or dent. Now you want to go back to your brilliant yellow, green, yellow, yellow, green, <laughs> brilliant yellow, green, and do the same thing. Kind of just dot it on in a few places and then blend it out until it doesn't blend anymore. And this is a really great technique that you can use for, for all kinds of backgrounds. You can do this for the sky, you can do this for water, you can do it for just a really cool background. And you just keep spouncing on the different layers of color being careful around your plant and seed. You just keep layering on the colors. And if it starts to get too light in a certain area, 
just go back and add a little bit of your darker colors. If it's too dark, brighten them up with some white or some lighter shades of whatever colors you're using. Notice how I'm kind of going over the edge here. I don't want it to look perfect. I don't want it to be that smooth little round hill right there. And I'm staying away from this spot right here. I want this to have a nice dark shadow. So I'm not coming up into this area with the lighter green. So here you're just playing back and forth, back and forth with the lighter colors, the darker colors, and just creating the layers back and forth of the darker and lighter, just stippling it in. If you get it too dark, go back over it with some light. If it's too light, go back over it with some dark. Now, right here, you want to be super careful around your seed and your plant and you want to try to conceal this dark line a little bit just so it's not a line there anymore. See how I'm kind of blending this down now? So I, I went over my edge, stippled right there on the edge and then I'm stippling down, bringing it down. Still leaving this really dark right here. And the same thing over on this side. And now back with some of that lighter, brilliant yellow green. You can see I'm tapping in one spot and then tapping off into the grass in other areas. I'm going to do the same thing here. That way it's just not all concentrated in that one spot. Right here around your seed you need to be super careful. You may want to get a small piece of paper and cover your seed. Just line it up right to the edge of your seed. And fill in right there. The same thing with your vine. And the same on the other side. Just want to bring that grassy area up so your seed's not just up here in the middle of nothing by itself. So I'm not really happy with this. I'm going to take this back a little bit. Just kind of blend that in a little bit. And then blot it back off. If you get it too high, just work with it while it's wet and blot it off. Now we need to darken in this ridge right here so you can tell that it's three separate little hills. So I'm going to take a medium sized paintbrush and just take the hooker's green and kind of dab it right along that edge and then blend it in. Just so you can see that there are three separate little mounds of grass here. I'm just going to take it right down here into this little valley area with a little bit of the darker green. all the way up on this side and blending it in. So you have that darker line but it's not completely 
solid. You want it blended still. Especially right down here in the little valley area. There we go, that's pretty good. I have my little dark ridge here, which creates the look of three separate uh, hills. Now we want to add the last little fine details of grass. And to do that, I'm going to use the Hooker's Green by itself and the Brilliant Yellow Green by itself. And I'm going to take the handle of my paintbrush and just dip it into my paint and kind of dot it on there. And you can kind of drag them up to where they're a little long. Instead of little blobs, you can do little streaks. And you just want to cover this center mound. I'm just dabbing them on here. Now I'm going to take that large paintbrush that I was using before and just kind of stipple them a little bit just so they blend in a little bit more. My paintbrush is wet which is going to help that paint spread a tiny bit. And now I'm going to blot it off. So again, they're not laying on the top. They're kind of blended in. Now with the regular end of the paintbrush, I'm going to go in with the Brilliant Yellow Green and add a bunch of little dots just dabbing it on some larger than others. I'm still staying away from this really dark area here because this is where it's coming up out of the ground. You don't want to brighten that up too much. Okay. Now again with my wet large paintbrush, just kind of stipple that on there. This just blends them in. If you get it in a spot you don't really want it, go back with a wet paintbrush and wash it off. Now we can dab this as well. Now with my tiny paintbrush, I'm going to go into my Brilliant Yellow Green and my Hooker's Green and just kind of load my paintbrush with a little bit of each color and draw some little wispies. Mostly the uh, brilliant yellow. And notice all of my little wispy grass bits are coming up towards the top of the flower, or towards the top of the plant. And I'm doing this with both colors, the hooker's green and the brilliant yellow. And 
and it may help to flip your painting upside down which is what I've done right now my painting is actually upside down to me and I'm just kind of drawing this like rain just up towards I'm actually doing a downward stroke towards me so that it looks like rain green rain <laughs> with both colors just grabbing whatever my paintbrush lands in Now while this is wet, stipple again with that damp paintbrush, just so these little grass bits aren't laying on the top. Don't be afraid to pick your painting up and look at it and see if you need more grass anywhere or if you've got a little bit too much you can still take it off while it's wet. Now I did all of my grass going diagonally this direction. Now I want to do the same thing with the grass going diagonally in the opposite direction. And that's just going to make it look more realistic and blend it in a little bit better. So still using both Hooker's Green and the Brilliant Yellow Green. And you won't need as many going the other direction. You just don't want everything all going up to the left or all going up to the right. really you're just filling in the second second direction you're just kind of filling in where you may need a little bit here and there okay while it's wet stipple it in So what those individual little strands of grass does just brings this to your focal point. These two kind of just blur away. And then you've got your focal point mound right here. You've still got your tiny little dark bit. If you did happen to make this a little bit too bright, it's really simple. Just take a little bit of your hooker's green and a tiny drop of black. Make that really dark green again or use, use this darkest green if you still have some left with a tiny little paintbrush. And the same technique, you just dab it on there and stipple it out a little bit. And then blot it if you need to. So that way you still have this one dark little section where it shows the seed coming up out of the ground. And there we have it. Our painting is complete. From here, again, you can put some text up here, you can do more to the background if you want to, write a beautiful quote or a phrase on here, something about breaking through, stepping out of the comfort zone, um, growing, any of those things. What Now is the point where you take this painting and you personalize it. We've done the the focal point now is where you personalize. So please share photos of your paintings in the Facebook group. Let me know how yours is coming along. Let me know if you have any questions or need any help with anything, any suggestions. And uh, don't worry, your template for your plant is in the Facebook group under the Files tab. So you can find that there if you're not comfortable drawing your own plant. You can also find photos of plants that you like and and draw them yourself or print them out and then collage them on you can just collage on the painting or you can collage it and then paint over the top of it but you really want to find uh, some symbol that works for you that that um, brings to life the vision of breaking through and breaking out of the comfort zone I loved making this painting. It turned out so beautiful. I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys paint and create. So please share your photos in the Facebook group. Thanks so much for spending your time with me today and joining me on this 30-day journey. I really hope that you are coming out of your shell, stepping out of that comfort zone, getting out of that rut, and, and really breaking through the surface just like this plant. Thanks so much for being here, and I will see you in the group. Mwah.